Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 4.3 of Mastering Parallel Programming series, we are going to learn about efficient task waiting techniques. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel Framework using PFX, that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in C Sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn how task waiting techniques helps us improving the performance. So grab your notepads because we have got some valuable insights coming your way. Efficient task waiting techniques. Let's start by understanding how to explicitly wait for a task to complete. There are two primary methods for this. What are those methods? Number one, calling task wait method with an optional timeout. Number two, accessing task result property in case of task T result. Okay, so let's understand it with the help of examples shown over here. Here, what I have written, where task is equal to task.factory.start new. So this line creates a new task using the start new method of task factory. Inside the lambda expression, I have written the code for task execution. What code I have written? I have written this console.writeLine statement where I am printing hello learn and joy into the console window. Next, I have written task.wait. So this line waits for the task to be completed. This is necessary because without waiting, the program would finish execution before the asynchronous task complete. Then I have written console.writeLine completed. So this completed will be printed almost immediately after hello learn and joy into console. So you have seen how we are going to use task wait method at making sure that the task wait until it gets complete. Okay, now see the code snippet for method 2. Here, what I have done, I have written task string task equal to task string factory dot start new method. So this line creates a new task of type task string using task dot factory dot start new method. And inside the lambda expression, I have returning this string hello learn and joy. Then what I am doing, I am just writing this statement as string str is equal to task dot result. So this line retrieves the result of the task synchronously by accessing its result property. That's what I have written task.result. So this will cause the current thread to block until the task completes and returns a result. That result I am storing into the string variable str result. Then printing into the console window with the help of console.writeLine. Then the end I am printing completed into the console window. But you need to keep in mind whenever we are going to use this task.result, it might lead to a deadlock if the task is not properly awaited. Methods for task waiting. There are mainly four methods of task that helps us for making the thread to wait until the task complete. What are those methods? Those methods are task.wait, task.wait all, task.wait any and task.win all. Task.wait, it waits for a single task to complete execution. Whereas task.wait all, it waits for all the provided tasks to complete execution. So wait all is similar to waiting out each task in turn, but is more efficient in that it requires at most just one context switch. Now let's talk about handling exception in task.wait all. Even if one or more tasks throw an unhandled exception, task.wait all still waits for every task to finish. It then rethrows a single aggregate exception containing exception from each faulted task. And one important thing we need to keep in mind when using wait all as it can lead to deadlock if used improperly. So always ensure that you are not waiting for a task that depends on the calling thread to complete. Now come to the task.wait any. It waits for any of the provided tasks to complete execution. So calling wait any is equivalent to waiting on a manual recent event slim signaled by each task as it finishes. I have already created one separate video on manual recent event stream class. So it will help you to understand what does it mean. And then you can compare easily. Okay. What manual recent event signal is providing and what task dot wait any is providing and why I'm saying that it is equivalent. Okay. So next come to the task dot when all. It creates a task that will be completed when all of the provided tasks have been completed. It doesn't block the calling thread and is more flexible alternative to wait all. Now let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of efficient task waiting tech. Here example number one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show the demo how we are going to use task wait and task reserve. Order to explicitly wait the task till it gets complete. So the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named task waiting techniques demo that has program.cs file program.cs file first of all i have added necessary name space then there is a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application so here first of all i am just printing this statement into console what a statement i am printing 
I am printing efficient task weighting techniques explained. Example number one: task weight and task result. So here I have written where task one is equal to task dot factory dot start new, and here inside that I have written console dot write line hello learn and UI. So this line creates a new task using the start new method of the task factory, and inside this lambda expression I have written this statement console dot write line hello learn and UI. So this is something we have written. So that whenever the task is going to get executed, this statement is going to get printed into console. Then I have written task one dot wait. So this statement waits for the task to be complete. This is necessary because without waiting, the program would finish execution before the execution task complete. So here, after this task wait, I have written completed one. So I just want to show you that program will wait until this task one gets complete. So first, this statement should get printed, and then immediately after that, completed one should get printed. That's what we are going to see as a part of our when we are going to execute this program and here i am just going to utilize the task result property in case of task result that's what i have written task string task 2 is equal to task string dot factory dot start new Inside that i have written return hello learn joy i am returning a string over here and so here i have written task 2 dot result so this line retrieves the result of the task synchronously by accessing its result property what i have written task 2 dot result and whatever the result that we are going to receive from this result properties we are going to store into the str result of a string data. str result is a variable of the string data type where we are going to hold the result of the task that got what I am going to do next I am just going to print that particular str result value into console window that's what I have written console dot write line str result then I have written console dot write line completed to immediately it should get printed complete so that's how this program is constructed let me execute this program and show this output okay so output got appear into this console window. see this output efficient task waiting techniques explain got printed example one task wait and task result then hello learn and joy got printed and completed so hello learn and joy got printed from this task one right and this task one got executed then hello learn and joy got printed that's what this statement i am seeing hello learn and joy over here then immediately completed one got, that's what the second statement here we are seeing completed one then again when we are creating this task two and task two when is it is going to get executed so this statement should get printed that's what we are seeing this third statement hello learn and joy got printed we are accessing this result property of the task two right so whatever the result that we are receiving that we are storing into str result we are putting into the star result right that's what this third statement got printed finally i am just printing this completed to completed to got print so you have seen how we are going to explicitly wait for a task to complete we have seen two way right either we can use the task wait method or we can use task result property in both fashion we are able to make sure that we are going to explicit wait or task to complete okay so now let's see the example number two where i'm just going to explain how we are going to use task dot wait on so first of all i have added necessary namespace for this particular console application using system using system dot threading dot task then there is a class name program that has main method which is an entry point of this application in main method first of all i'm just printing this statement into what i'm printing i'm printing efficient task waiting techniques explained example number two task dot wait on i have written this statement task string task one is equal to task dot factory dot start new here i am just simulating some work with a delay that's what i have written task dot delay 2000 dot wait here i am joining return hello then i have created task number two i have written task string task two is equal to task dot factory dot start new here also i am using delay method simulating some work with a delay right so task dot delay 1000 and dot wait and i am returning learn similarly i have created other task that is the task number three task string task 3 is equal to task dot factory dot start new here also i am just simulating some work then i am returning character n over here right so return n then again i have created another task which is nothing but the task 4 here again i am just simulating some work with a delay so i have written task dot delay 3000 wait then here I'm returning enjoyable dot. This is something I have written task. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wait for all tasks to complete. So how we are going to do that? For that, I'm just going to use task dot wait all method. So how we are going to use? We need to write task dot wait all and inside we need to pass this argument. Task one, comma task two, comma task three, comma task four. So this is how we are going to use this task dot wait all. So here it will wait for all the provided tasks which is nothing but the task 1, task 2, task 3, task 4. So this statement basically makes sure that it wait for all the provided tasks to complete execution. Then only I'm just going to print what is the result of the task 1, what is the result of task 2, what is the result of task 3, what is the result of task 4. Those things I'm printing into the console window with the help of console.write line. And once this statement got printed, then I'm just writing completed. This is how this program is constructed. Let me go and execute this program. Okay, so output got appear into this console window. 
See, the, the first statement got printed efficient task waiting techniques explained. Example 2, task dot wait on. Here, if you see, task 1 return hello world, task 2 return learn, task 3 return n, task 4 return enjoy triple dot. So, this is how it got printed with the help of console dot write line where we are just, you know, uh, task 1 dot result, task 2 dot result, task 3 dot result, task 4 dot result got printed. That's what we are able to see here hello learn enjoy triple dot. Then finally, completed what got printed so that's how we are going to use this task dot wait all map okay let's see the demo of example number three i'm going to utilize task dot wait any method so here first of all i have added necessary namespaces like using system using system dot 13 dot task then there is a class name program that has main method which is entry point of this application so here i'm printing this state efficient task waiting techniques explained example number three task dot wait any here what i'm doing i'm just creating a task one task two task three task four Similarly, what we have done at the last example. Here, if you see what I'm doing in the task one, I'm just making sure that, that some work is going to be done. So simulating with the help of task.delay 2000.wait method. It will basically represents okay that I'm doing some work over there. Then what I'm doing, I'm just returning hello keyword. Okay, so similarly, I have created task number two. Here also I'm just simulating some work with the delay. That's what I have written task.delay 1000 Wait. Then I'm returning learn word together for this task number. Then in the task three, again here also I'm waiting in a delay with the help of task dot delay thousand dot wait. These four tasks I have created. Then what I'm doing, I'm just using this task dot wait anymore. Passing task one, task two, task three, and task four as an argument. So this statement making sure that it will wait for any of the provided task to complete execution. Any one task one, task two, task three task 4 anyone gets completed then it will move to the next state okay so here what i'm doing whatever the task is going to get completed i'm going to get the index right so index value that i'm storing into the int variable and what i'm doing i'm using the switch state where i'm just checking okay if index value is 0 then i'm printing this statement task 1 dot result if index value is 1 then i'm printing task 2 dot result index value is 2 then i'm printing task 3 dot result okay if if index value is 3 then I'm just printing task 4 dot result, right? So that's how this switch statement is going to work. Finally, I'm just going to print this complete. So there is a possibility that only one case statement is going to get executed because it this this task dot wait any method is going to wait for one task to come. Then it will move to the next statement. That's how this program is constructed. Okay, so let me go and execute this program and show this output. Okay, so output got appear into this console. Window. Okay, so output got appear into this console. Window. If you see this statement got printed, efficient task waiting techniques explained. Example number three, task dot wait any. And if you see the task two completed and this learn what got printed, then it's just printing completed. So this task dot wait any method, it is not waiting for other tasks to get complete, right? That's what this statement got printed immediately after task two got printed. This statement got printed and program gets completed. Okay, so now let's see the example number four where I'm going to utilize task dot when all method. Okay, so first of all, what I have done, I have added necessary namespaces at the top. That's what I have written using system, using system dot threading dot task. Then there is a class name program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. So here, as a part of first statement inside the main method, what I'm doing, I'm just printing this statement into console window. That's what I have written. Efficient task waiting techniques explained. Example number four, task dot when all method. Then I'm creating a task. So I have created task one, task two, task three, and task four, like we have done at the previous exam. Then what I'm doing, I'm just using task dot when all method where I'm just passing this argument task 1, task 2, task 3 and task 4. Then what I'm doing, I'm just printing what is the task 1 result. Then I'm using task 1 dot result, task 2 dot result, task 3 dot result, task 4 dot result. This statement is just going to get printed. And finally, just making sure that this completed is going to get printed into. Okay, so that's how this program is constructed. Let me go and execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appear into this console window. If you see this first statement got printed, efficient task waiting techniques explained. Example number four, task dot when all. Task one result, hello got printed. Task two result, learn got printed. Task three result, and got printed. Task four result, enjoy triple dot got printed. Finally, completed got printed. So that's how we are going to use this task dot when all. Okay, so that brings me to end of my session today. Sum up in this video, we learned how to explicitly wait for a task or task to complete and explain various efficient task waiting techniques. Like task dot wait, task dot wait all, task dot wait any, task dot when all. Finally, we saw examples illustrating each of these techniques. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. 
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग सी यू नेक्स्ट वीडियो